Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, February the 17th, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, the U.S. military trains to take down its own citizens in a mock city. Then, a blackmailed Congress stalls outlawing NSA surveillance. And is he a science guy, or does he just play one on TV? That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Not all of us are in comas watching TV, buddy. Not all of us are busy, you know, down at the bar watching UFC, looking tough in front of our buddies. Well, in our top story today, we see more signs that currency controls are underway. Chase is imposing new capital controls on cash deposits. Now, they say that they're going to mandate identification for cash deposits and ban cash that's being deposited into another person's account. And if you look at that screen there, look where it says to safeguard your account. That's right. We don't want anybody sneaking any cash into your account without your knowledge. That's about as phony as it gets. But we're also seeing a new approach from Google for internet login, which raises questions not only of currency control, but also of internet freedom, giving you a universal internet ID. If you remember, it was probably only about a month ago that we saw some slides that were leaked from the NSA, and it was all about the iPhone, and they said, who would have thought in 1984, and they show the Apple commercial from 1984, that this, and they show Steve Jobs holding up an iPhone, would be Big Brother. This is an NSA series of slides. And then the third slide says, and that the zombies would pay for it. And they show people willingly lining up at the store to get their iPhones. Well, now we see that Google has just purchased a company called Slick Login. And what they're going to do is use your phone as a way to log in securely to various internet sites, especially into your banking account. Take a look at this video. Some of you already need an irritating token in order to get in. And the rest of you will need one soon. And then you take your phone out. No need to unlock it. No need to click anything in it. All you have to do is just put it close to the computer you log in from. And that's it. You are logged in. Our technology makes sure your phone is close to your computer and only then confirms your session. Now, in the larger presentation, what he's talking about is our token is what we in the United States would typically call a dongle. And he's talking about how different applications, different places that you would go would each give you a dongle to securely log in. Or you might have a series of numbers that you're given by someone like Google, and they're constantly changing those if you don't type them in quickly enough. They're making it as difficult as possible. He says, if you don't have that, you soon will. Now, the way this works is they're passing information back audibly between the phone and the computer. And no one asked him how they get control of your phone. Remember, he said you don't have to turn it on, you don't have to unlock it. In other words, they have complete control of your phone, and they can pass these audio signals back and forth. But look at what else they can do. Imagine you run a bank, and you want to let your customers perform large transactions only from the home or the office, and not from other countries. With Slick Login, it's very easy. All you have to do is mark the areas you want them to log in from, Mark the areas you want to block. And that's it. As simple as that. Now he starts out and he says, imagine you're a bank. And you want to control where your customers are going to be able to do banking. So basically they can say that you can only do it in certain areas and they can exclude other areas, which means that's another way of exercising currency control. This is something that they make it difficult on one side and then they make it very easy to take the path that they have pre-decided they want you to follow. And it's not just Google and technology companies and the banks that are manipulating you. Of course, the political parties are doing this big time. Look at this article from Oliver Stone. He says, Obama's lack of spine is stunning. He says something happened because none of the things he promised, transparency, a government that would reconsider the war on terror and these programs, none of that happened, none of it. He's got a lack of spine and he's a weak man. Or maybe he's just a liar who is no different than the Republicans. They've all got the same agenda. They're just manipulating people with it. He never believed any of those promises. And as Alex pointed out, just because he's a constitutional professor doesn't mean he's going to uphold the Constitution. It just means he's more dangerous when he knows how to take it down. Now, we saw further evidence of this on Fox News. Pacadell said the GOP establishment wants the IRS to go after the Tea Party. And this was on Fox News. 
two Democrats, one Republican, and they all agreed that the majority of everyone, including Democrats, sees this as a corruption issue. And yet, they all agreed that the Republicans don't want to do anything about it. It's simply posturing because they're threatened by the Tea Party. He made it very clear. He said they're protecting the lobbying consulting class. They are preserving privileges and arrangements that benefit their people over the interests of the country. That's very true. And of course, the Republican there said, these are things that are far worse than what took down Nixon. That's what we've been saying all along. And yet, the phony Republicans who are in charge, people like Mitch McConnell, John McCain, and others are doing nothing about that. And of course, the blackmailed Congress is also sitting on any NSA reforms. That has been passed by 20 senators who've signed onto the bill, not passed, but 20 senators have signed onto the bill in the Senate and 120 in the House. And yet, both in the House and in the Senate, the leaders are sitting on these bills and not letting them come out. They are not interested in any reforms of the NSA. We also see that Ted Cruz made it very clear that these guys are putting on a phony facade about controlling government. Yet look at the way Bloomberg spins this. They say the Cruz Senate stunt goes unpunished as old tools don't work. No, actually the old tools, the old tools would be people like John McCain and McConnell. Those old tools are working very well for the system. But Ted Cruz exposed what those old tools were about. He insisted on an up or down 60 vote majority, not just a simple 50 vote majority. If they'd gone with 50 votes, the Republicans could have hit out and they could have said, well, we don't really like this. They could have told their constituents that they didn't approve of it while they merely sat by and let this happen. But when he put it up to 60, they really wanted this to pass. They really wanted to put us into more debt and what they call a clean bill. That means there's no conditions whatsoever attached to it, nothing to constrain spending, nothing to constrain the government in any way whatsoever, just raise the debt ceiling. That's what the Republicans call a clean bill. And so Ted Cruz wanted to point out their hypocrisy on it. He forced a vote. And so they're very mad that he's exposed the real agenda of McCain and McConnell and many others who are simply Republican in name only or conservative in name only or limited government in name only. Take your pick. Now, the science guy has been going around debating people on various issues. He debated on creation versus evolution. Now he's talking about climate change. He says, big government is the cure for climate change. Now, you've got to understand that Bill Nye is not really a science guy. He just plays one on television. Remember decades ago when you had Marcus Welby come out and say that because it was one of the earliest examples of the pharmaceutical companies selling drugs and, of course, People saw him on television and they think if he's playing a doctor that he's a real doctor. So they had to put that disclaimer out there. Well, this guy, just because he plays a science guy on a kid's television show, doesn't make him a scientist. Look at what he said. He said, the solution lies in government doing more in order to lead the world in the fight. The fight for what? The fight to try to stop global warming? When CO2 is going up in record amounts and yet you still have global cooling, and I'm not talking about the fact that we're having a cold winter. This is a 17-year trend. You don't have global warming. And certainly you don't have anthropogenic global warming, man-made global warming. That's a much bigger thing to prove even than proving global warming. If man were the predominant factor, then they would presumably be able to override the seasons because just a little bit of a tilt of the earth gives us a difference of summer and winter. And yet, look at what he did. This other article here, Climate Depot from Mark Moreno, he points out that Bill Nye was holding up a picture of the Arctic and talking about how they were losing ice in the Antarctic. And yet, that is not only nonsense, it's totally factually incorrect. He says, Arctic sea ice extent on, is on track to have the highest minimum in the modern satellite era. It is 27.4% above normal as of February the 7th, and on and on. There are many facts that support the fact that ice is growing. And to underscore that, remember just before Christmas, there was a global warming expedition that got stuck in the Antarctic because the ice was so thick, and the rescue ships got stuck. That's summer down there when they were getting stuck in that ice. So adding to his nonsense and non-facts, he's now adding big government solutions because that's the point of global warming. It's a way to get big government in the door to enact Agenda 21, to enact climate change carbon tax credits, which is something like Federal Reserve on a worldwide basis. 
Now, another article here that's on InfoWars today from Mike Krieger, Liberty Blitzkrieg. He says the U.S. plunges to 46th in World Press Freedom Index. We've fallen even below Romania. Now, this is an organization, Reporters Without Borders. They take a look at freedom of the press in various countries. This is the greatest fall that any nation has seen in a single year, dropping 13 slots. And, of course, we know why that is, because the government is increasingly hostile to journalists. Well, that's it for our news portion. Stay tuned. Right after the break, we're going to have some special reports. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com We're on the march, the Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. Welcome back. Now, RoboCop premiered last Friday, and Leanne McAdoo is taking the pulse of the public to see what their attitudes are towards using robots in combat and law enforcement situations. Would you be okay with robot cops? Yes. No. I, I, I like having someone actually there in person and that I can relate to and just interact with. I think it's kind of frightening and I think a lot of times human judgment saves lives and is like really important. I assume it can be good that you will treat everybody more equal. Robocops? The real ones or the fake ones? The real ones. Uh, not too sure about that. I'm gonna be scared for my life, what you mean? <laughs> uh, and, until they make machines that can think better than human beings, and even human beings, and human beings make errors all the time. I mean, all the lawsuits for, you know, wrongful deaths. You lose, I guess, that sensitivity that your average person might have. A lot of things are black and white, and sometimes, you know, there's circumstances which, um, I think there should be a little more slack. With. Would you be like, oh, there's that robot, I hope he doesn't shoot me. Uh, I wouldn't give him a reason to shoot me, so I wouldn't be scared, per se. Did you know that in some places it's against the law to grow a garden? Is it really? No, I didn't know that. Or, or they can ticket you for washing your car in your driveway? I did not know that. You're breaking the law. I mean... You have 30 seconds to comply. <laughs> and then they, they put their twin rotary machine guns on you. Yeah. This is a DARPA robot pet man. This is what they're working on. Look at that guy. Yeah. Isn't that scary? They're turning these into soldiers. Why, why do they need unmanned drones <laughs> that can run at things? I don't, I don't understand the need for it. For someone to have that much power, you kind of need someone to be a, have more intelligence than some robot. Would you ever date a robot? No. <laughs> I don't think you can replace the, the human heart. 